we can take it. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Jacob. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Moses Banturachi, and I take care of remittances in EcoBank Uganda. We've been uh, quite fortunate to work with uh, Senfree, uh, the supporting team that have uh, helped us, one, in identifying the KYC and CDD challenges that we are facing as a country, but of course as a market. And uh, I'll start with uh, my presentation. This is on uh, the second slide, which, yeah, which is okay. So I'll speak through remittances in EcoBank Uganda. Uh, currently, in summary, we are serving our customers in our 10 uh, retail branches on all the sectors that Jacob identified, commercial banking, uh, corporate banking, and then retail banking or consumer banking. And this is where remittances sit. Uh, we do this uh, through also through our channels, our digital channels, internet uh, and mobile banking. Then we also have another strong hand which is uh, Express Points or agency banking, where we're serving our customers. Um, now, like Jacob highlighted, we are serving our customers on over-the-counter services on our own uh, product, which is rapid transfer, and third-party organizations or international money transfer organizations, and this is MoneyGram and Western Union. Uh, so under rapid transfer, we are seeing that people are actually able to send and receive money within the 33 African EcoBank markets, like still Jacob highlighted. And by the way, these are char characterized by uh, tourists. We are looking at uh, foreign students, and then we are also looking at expatriates. But more to mention, or over 85 percent, we are seeing that these are uh, foreign immigrant workers who are sending back home money for family support. So under rapid transfer, still customers or non-customers, by the way, because if we say it's an EcoBank product, it's not only for EcoBank customers. It's also it, it also can uh, sorry it also can be accessed through a cash over the counter transfer where someone gets a reference number and they can redeem that money in a different location. Then it can also be sent to an account. It can also be sent uh, to a wallet, depending on the choice that a customer has presented. Uh, we also, like I said, we partnered with uh, MoneyGram and Western Union uh, strictly to serve over-the-counter transfers. Uh, but uh, this has been affected, of course, predominantly by different challenges, which uh, by the help of Senfree, we actually brainstormed and identified as a poor turnaround time. We uh, found out that customers were spending a lot of time in our branches trying to access a single remittance. Then two, we looked at people who are trusting third parties uh, or other people to receive money on their behalf, which of course possesses a risk of uh, fraudulent transactions and maybe people who are missing out with their transactions. Then uh, forms of IDs, people were not comfortable with acceptable forms of IDs, or sometimes they've forgotten their IDs, and other times, by the way, they have come with expired forms of IDs, and therefore we are unable to serve them. Next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. So with the help of Sentry... Okay, someone needs to mute, please. Okay, so with the help of Senfri, we identified uh, different interventions and key ones were, uh, were two, and the first one was system generated receipts. And then the second one was the digital ID database like, uh, like Lezan identified. Next slide. So under system printed receipts, we identified challenges and these were so many. For example, we have customers who are unable to read and write by the way, and these are, supposed to be served in our branches. So if someone is not able to write, how do we expect them to fill a form? So they were trusting third parties to come and fill for them, which is a big risk. Then there are people who are also complaining on the of the size of the receipt of the, of the forms that they were filling. There were different fields that they were so uncomfortable with. So uh, the digital ID database, we actually realized it was uh, a replica or it was re a repetition of what is actually printed 
out after the transaction is uh, is processed. So in this intervention, we said we are generating only the receipt that has been produced from the system and to be sufficient to serve our remittance over the counter uh, customers. So here we're going to analyze how we have actually moved with the intervention, which is live already in our locations. Next slide, please. Um, so this intervention was, uh, of course, we've been working uh, with uh, Senfree since last year, and this was rolled out in June this year. Now, we are going to see that uh, we, we, we put a number or we put a percentage, which is an average percentage of 5% uh, of uh, uh, all the transactions being rejected because of customers not being able to complete these forms. And then, uh, we see that we have improved and eliminated all these rejections after we have uh, gone live on the system generated receipts. So the, this solution has helped us to eliminate uh, rejected inbound transactions and it has actually contributed to growth as we are going to see in the next slide. Next slide, please. So like I said, when this was launched in June, we saw a 69% uh, growth in remittances, whereby we were receiving uh, averagely 288 transactions. But by the time we clocked September, end of September, we were already at 487. And uh, the feedback that comes in is that uh, from the tailors, by the way, for example, they are able to identify that I am able to do many more transactions in a single day than I used to do. Other customers also bring in the feedback that they are able to actually spend more uh, less time compared to previously when they were filling forms and uh, they were taking so much time. Because you can imagine someone comes and they fill the form, uh, you, you have to go through the form, you have to peruse with their bad handwriting, God forbid, and then you have to interpret and you put this data or this information into the system, save for someone who is telling you, uh, and you're inputting. So it's quite easier, it's quite simple. As we can see, the growth is uh, 69%. Then uh, now between uh, the same year, when this, uh, uh, be between the same month when this intervention was launched in June this year and June last year, 2021, we are going to see that also remittances have actually grown. Month on month, yes, they have grown this year, but also in comparison with the last year uh, period, we have also grown by 19%. Then uh, also June and September, remittance transactions themselves also have grown up to 30%. And uh, I'm going to give us a, a practical example. When someone has come to the branch, we realized that the time that they were spending to fill a form, was averaged at around 10 minutes. And then the time that this tailor has also spent to process the transaction to, and to interpret the form that the customer has filled was also uh, averaged to be around 20 minutes or less or 15 minutes. So averagely, we are looking at 25 minutes. So if we have eliminated the form, it means we have uh, saved 10 minutes of the customer of the turnaround time that the customer is going to spend in our branch. Uh, next slide. Okay, so we are also going to see that uh, with uh, the introduction of the system generated receipt, we have increased our remittance success for vulnerable groups because we are saying uh, people who are being served in our country branches, they were the most affected with the existing uh, system that we had where they were able to be filling forms for every transaction they were receiving. So we are seeing that there, there was also an impact because 70% of these transactions are actually processed in the urban centers and 30% of our customers are in rural households. So there's also feedback that this has impacted uh, and it has actually improved on the access of remittances for low income households. And of course, women have uh, uh, generated or greatly uh, uh, benefited from this because actually from our data, 57% uh, of the transactions are done by men and the 43%, a whole 43% is by women. So this, we see a very big impact on the access uh, of remittances for the rural household, specifically to women. Then also just to highlight is that uh, between June and uh, September, 
inbound remittances have grown by 69%. Uh, here we are looking at uh, an additional 470 transactions month on month. Next slide. Uh, so we are going to also look at the second intervention, which is the digital ID database. Now, this is quite interesting in that uh, actually these two work hand in hand. Uh, the turnaround time that the teller is going to spend, or the, how much time the teller is going to spend when they are uh, terminating or processing a transaction, it's also prudent that they have to take a copy of the customer's ID, print out, and then attach it on the form that has been printed out of the system. So this challenge, like uh, Alizan uh, identified, we saw that we are going to maintain soft copies of all the IDs, all the customers that have transacted with us. We retain a copy of their ID in the system so that the next time you come to transact with us, we already have an ID with us. So I am not going to print uh, or photocopy out for, you know, for, for, for storage purposes. I already have your copy stored. Uh, so the features of this ID database, we are going to see that tellers will be able to scan the front and back. And here they are capturing all the bio data, uh, expiry date of the customer's ID. And then we shall be able to notify customers in case their IDs are expired. Uh, so this database has actually been designed in-house and it's uh, being launched very soon because we are doing uh, the tests uh, as we speak. We already uh, did uh, piloting with different departments because as you know, in the banking sector, we have different stakeholders in this. We have uh, audit, we have internal control and we have compliance. And of course we have the information security and IT departments and all these uh, had to confirm that all the checks have been passed before the database is actually uh, launched. So after this person has stored a digital copy in the system, now, if I am a repeat customer, I am going to present a unique identifier the next time I come to you and you can be able to retrieve a copy of my ID. Then we see that there are different uh, security features that we've put in place. Uh, we are only going to authorize people who are going to access the system. And this includes frontline staff. We have auditors, compliance, and internal controllers like identified. So someone may say, maybe if this system has been designed by the bank, maybe everyone has access to it. No, they are only authorized uh, staff that will be able to access the system. Then also to access and to input all the information, uh, the information also has to be modified or, sorry, it has to be authorized. So it's not that anything that you're going to put is casting stone. It has to be authorized by, of course, uh, a specified authorizer in that branch or in that location. And then every time the, 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 the data is input in the system, an OTP or an alert is actually generated to the compliance department for a third review, by the way, because we don't want to have uh, vague information. There has to be a third eye, which is compliance, to confirm that actually what has been input is a uh, standard or in, in case of any changes, uh, it has to be alerted to the team for modification. Then uh, there are going to be systematic updates, which are going to be periodic. Uh, when the system, of course, has been compromised, there are going to be different checks that will be made and then upgrades will be made uh, to, to tackle the, the challenges at the time. Then it also provides an audit trail for everything that has been done let's say it's an input, it's a modification, or it's even login, it provides an audit trail of where, when, and actually who has done uh, whatever they've done. Either it's login, it's modification, or it's inputting. Uh, then also, we are seeing that with the digital ID database, we shall be able to track our customers. For customers who have uh, received money with us, we can be able to engage further uh, going forward. Uh, maybe someone wants to open an account with us. We are saying that you can actually uh, come and trust you, uh, your account opening process with us because you already have your information stored in our system. Uh, it's also going to help us to grow in terms of a referral. If, cust if a customer has come to us and they are not, uh, they're not asked for an ID for the second time, they can easily refer to the second person or the next of kin or the family or friends. They'll be like, the processes in Ecobank are as seamless as possible. 
so the KYC challenges or the, K, uh, the KYC and CDD challenges are so many, like we identified, but these two, we saw they were prudent in tackling the immediate, uh, the, the immediate challenges that were at hand. But also to highlight that uh, there's another challenge that has been identified in our market. And this is when uh, uh, I identified immigrant workers. Someone has gone abroad to actually work out of the country and by the time they're sending back money, when their contracts expire, they come back and their money is nowhere. Maybe it's used up by a relative or it's used up by a friend. So how we are tackling this, this may be out of the scope, but how we are tackling it is to advise them to have accounts uh, to be able to deposit money direct onto their bank accounts. So we are devising low KYC accounts for these people, mostly the women, the domestic workers who are uh, mostly in the Middle East countries. Then also the refugee community, there's been uh, a, a clarification from the team and then with uh, different engagements with the stakeholders, uh, the, the regulator in specific, they were able to provide guidance that we can be able to serve these customers on a risk-based approach uh, by looking at the refugee ID and looking at a family at a station where these members have to be family heads. Yeah, that's uh, my presentation in uh, in summary. Over to you, Alison. Thank you, Alison. Uh, 